Dr. Crouch is here, and Hallelujah. we are so thankful. We have been expecting this live show from Jerusalem. Uh, I felt like many, many years praying for this. So thank you, Dr. Crouch, thank for you. coming here. Thank you, thank you. I think I have gotten the promotion. You know, back home, I'm just old Paul. Yeah. <laughs> here, I'm prophet and patriarch, my goodness. <laughs> This will go but to my this is head. so true, Dr. Crouch. Yes, well, I have well, a prophetic word from the Lord for the wonderful people here today. Oh, but before that, I think I have died and gone to heaven. This is a 38-year dream come true for this yes. old man. Yes. Yes. This is a dream come true. We have tried, tried, tried through the years. And only with the good help of our Russian brothers and sisters. Yes, Russian yes. And, and yes. the fact that so Hallelujah. many have immigrated into the land of Israel. And now even the government is welcoming, welcoming us to bring our messianic congregations and to actually have a TV channel. I told you the other day, uh, and you saw it on BTS, uh, for... 37 years, I've met every head of prime ministers, uh, head of the FCC or the yeah. Ministry of Com Communications, and every time it was no, 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 no. Well, I thought it was very ironic that the cable channel that will send it into virtually every home is called Yes, yes. TV. <laughs> Oh my. I think the Lord has a little sense of humor there, maybe. And I am just so happy to be here. And you will never know what a blessing your lives are to this old man and to all of us across the entire Trinity Broadcasting Network, where this program is going tonight. Can I just do one thing? In this audience, would you just start waving? Just a nice wave. And uh, the, put a big smile on your face and let everyone know that Jesus loves you and that you love Jesus. And find a camera because we're going to wave and now you're waving to the entire world. You're waving to your brothers and sisters. Keep waving. In India tonight, Hallelujah. on Hong Kong cable, you're waving oh to your brothers and sisters. You're waving to those in Iraq and Iran by Hotbird and, and in Europe and America and South America. All of this, if you just tuned in, if you don't know what you're watching, this is 
TBN. This is in Jerusalem, Israel. Are you kidding me? We are thrilled to be here today, and everyone in this, give God a great God bless you, and give a God a hand. Hallelujah. This is awesome. And uh, we've been thinking about this, and there's a, there's a picture of a big truck that you had drawn many, many years ago that one day you thought would be sitting in the sands of Israel somewhere with a satellite dish or a transmitter tower, and that picture is hung on the wall of TBN, and today here we stand right now as we're speaking. Man. We are into the homes of Jerusalem, Israel. We're in the homes of America. We're in the homes of everyone around the world. We welcome you to Jerusalem, a very special place with a very special program tonight, and you have a very special word. Yes, I do. And I feel blessed to be here with you. I have a word from the Lord for the land of Israel, a very special word, both from the Holy Word and from my own heart for you today. In Isaiah 62, I'm reading from the Living Bible, and it is a very awesome, awesome prophecy. And Isaiah is speaking on behalf of the Lord God himself. This is God speaking, okay? God says, because I love Zion, because my heart yearns for Jerusalem, I will not cease to pray for her or to cry out to God on her behalf until she shines forth in his righteousness and is glorious in his salvation. The nations shall see your righteousness. Kings shall be blinded by your glory. And God will confer upon you a new name. Israel's, Jerusalem's going to get a new name someday. It's secret. God hasn't told us yet what it is. Huh? He will hold you aloft, Israel, in his hands for all to see. A splendid crown for the king of kings. Hmm. Never again shall you be called the God-forsaken land or the land that God forgot. Your new name will be the land of God's delight and the bride. Did you know Israel is the only nation in the whole Bible that God says, I am married to. I am married to this land. No other nation. Oof. I get chill bumps just thinking. For the Lord God delights in you and you and will claim you as his very own. Your children will care for you, old Jerusalem, with joy like that of a young man who marries a virgin. And God will rejoice over you as a bridegroom over his bride. O oh, Jerusalem, I have set intercessors on your walls who shall cry to God all day and all night for the fulfillment of his promises. Take no rest, all of you who pray, and give God no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes her respected and admired throughout the earth. Oh, there's so much more, but let me conclude. Tell my people, I, the Lord your God, am coming to save you and will bring you many gifts. And they shall be called the holy people and the Lord's redeemed. And Jerusalem shall be called the land of desire and the city that God has blessed. Beautiful. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord for you today. And I tell you by the word of the Lord from my own heart and from the word of the Lord revealed to me, you are the generation that Isaiah was talking about here. You are that generation. You are the generation that is going to be alive on planet Earth to welcome back the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Dr. Crouch, you know this, uh, this is a great gift for nation of Israel, Shalom Channel, what you yes. just presented to us.
Thank you. Thank you on the behalf of many pastors who is here and many uh, con uh, representative of many cities of Jerusalem, uh, of Israel. Thank you so much. Beautiful. One little final word, and this gets a little political, but so be it. There, uh -oh. there are many enemies that would try to say you should go back to the 1967 borders. I come to apologize on behalf of our President Obama for saying something like that. There are millions of us in America that do not agree with him. Here's what the word of the Lord says. And Jeremiah, one more verse. Again, you will plant your vineyards upon the mountains of Samaria and eat from your own gardens there. Wow. Amen. <laughs> Nobody's going to take it away from you. You are in the land to stay and Amos and Obadiah confirm it if I had the time I could prove to you a thousand times over again that Israel is here to stay hallelujah to welcome back the king of kings and the lord of lords oh hallelujah you know uh, we have one of your family members that I'm going to call up in just one second, but I, I need to give honor where honor is due. And for years, I heard that the Russians were coming, you know, to Israel. I thought it was going to be at Armageddon, but the Russians came. The Russians came. And uh, the Thank Russians you, have established Igor. Victoria, please stand with Igor. Uh, this young couple and pastor, uh, if you would just come, Pastor Oren. And let's just, let's just kind of give honor where honor is due. This young couple uh, and, and the associates that they're with, this studio exists here today because of the love of the local Jewish community, yes. the believers here that came together, that established this. And you and I just got to come over here along for the ride, and we are here and uh, TBN pays some of the bills around here, you know, for the Yes Channel. And we're so thankful for very young and aggressive Russians that have come and taken care of everything. We couldn't do it from America like that, so thank you. So those watching by Trinity Broadcasting, uh, just pray for them. And if you would also just open this broadcast and uh, pray... A, a prayer of blessing over the people Lord, watching and over this studio family. and the pastors here. And then in a moment, I would love for uh, Rick Ridings to come. Yeah. Dr. Crouch, as you said, uh, God has a sense of humor. <laughs> and it's ironically that even the communism, even the suffering of my nation, call this nation to existence. Yeah. So you prophesied that, you, you told us about this, but we didn't understand it. But now we're receiving uh, the word of the prophet and for the future of Israel. We're receiving this gift of Shalom Channel. Thank you, Dr. Crouch. I mean, uh, we're so thankful to the viewers of TBN who've been supporting TBN yes. years after years, uh, giving their hearts, their love. And right now we're asking the blessing. Lord God, we're asking the supernatural blessing upon every viewer who've been supporting TBN. And uh, Lord God, we know that there is more people who want to, be, to see you face to face. And right now they want to turn off, uh, turn from their uh, uh, bad ways and go to, uh, uh, go to you, Lord God. And right now, Lord, we believe that we will support TBN with the double portion, triple portion, in hundredfold in the name of Jesus. In every case, uh, with our mouth, with our finances, with our uh, support, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, I want to remind, to remind you about the, it is city of great king. You know, in the time you speak about Jerusalem, I, 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 I see something in the spirit. It is a new anointing coming to Jerusalem and to Israel, to congregations, to messianic congregations. Because you have this word very strongly in your heart, I see this, it is coming from your heart, and God put this in your heart. You know, it is blessings not only for Israel, for 
nations from Israel. And uh, we want to bless uh, the people who is watched today in uh, prayer of Aaron. Aaron, pr priest, Aaron, the brother of Moses, brother of, brother of Moshe. We want to bless people. Brother Hallelujah. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are thankful to you, Lord God. Let's pray in Hebrew, and you can uh, enjoy uh, the Hebrew language and also the old, 3,000 years old prayer. Yivarchecha Adonai veishmerecha, Yaer Adonai panavelecha veichunecha, Yisa Adonai panavelecha veyasem lecha shalom. Beshem Yeshua Hamashiach. Amen. 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 Well, Dad, I think I'm going to share the mic here with uh, Pastor Rick. And, you know, I know that you are laboring here. The TBN family knows that you're the one that kind of prays for everything, everything and everybody. What's the, what's the latest report from uh, Jerusalem? Well, the report is, I, I think, is, as uh, Oren said, there, there is a new anointing. God is moving in a, a new way in this land, in a very powerful way. There's much more openness to hear about Jesus. There's much more openness to realize that there are Christians in the nations who love and pray for Israel and are standing together with it. Uh, but also part of what God is doing is breaking down walls that Satan has tried to construct. And um, we're in just a few weeks, we're having our youth conference where we'll have about at least 600 Israeli young people, Jewish and Arab, together, wow. loving wow. the Lord from the West Bank, from Israel together. And they're coming together for three days to worship, to pray, to cry out to God, to seek God together. And uh, this has happened the last four years. It's amazing to see the love that God is putting in the hearts of these young people toward one another. Uh, not long ago at our, at our place here of 24-7 worship and prayer, uh, we had a group of young people from Nazareth, Arab young people, and they said, can we come down and meet with some of the Jewish young people from Jerusalem? We said, sure, come on down. You can have worship and pray together. Well, at the end of their time together, they both decided together they would wash each other's feet. So you had oh, Jewish wow. and Arab oh. kids washing each other's feet, praying blessings over each Amazing. other, loving each other. At the conference, we even had an Israeli soldier praying for a young man from Gaza. <laughs> young man from Gaza praying for an Israeli soldier. You know, those kinds of things, uh, the other kinds of news channels aren't going to put out. Amen. But there's some good news that you can hear on, on places like TBN that God is at work and there are things that are breaking through and that are changing in this part of the world. Well, we could turn Rick loose and he could take the rest of the program <laughs> telling us the good things happening here. But my eldest sister's son is doing a good job raising up certainly a major contingency of that group spoken of here who prays for the peace of Jerusalem. And around the clock, 24-7, prayer is going up right here from Mount Zion. And we appreciate that. We honor you for that. And we bless you and all of your precious you. young people that are praying for the peace of Jerusalem. We appreciate the prayers that come because of TBN. Thank you so much for standing yeah. with us. You know, the last time uh, we were together, we were in Jerusalem at the Jerusalem Theater. We were doing a big night of hope. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, we had Joel Osteen, Joel and Victoria Osteen with us and about 700 TBN partners from around America. We are coming back to Jerusalem, by the way. Uh, in 2012 with Joseph Prince in September of 2012. It's going to be an amazing thing. But I remember uh, the declaration uh, thing that you did. Before you leave this studio, you know that everyone's watching around the world, and, and, and there, there's something about Jerusalem that everyone connects to. Mm -hmm. And uh, like you did there on the Night of Hope, just you know, take a minute or two here, Rick, and just kind of speak to the people around the world. Maybe, maybe there's some that don't understand the importance of Jerusalem to their faith, to their, to their own personal. Just connect them to this land. You know what that's all about, and kind of do your thing for a second. Okay. Um, actually, Jerusalem is the only city in the Bible that every believer in the whole world is commanded to pray for. And so you, you need to ask, why would God say that? Because God sees everything ahead, knows everything ahead. He knew that before Jesus came the first time, there was a tremendous uh, demonic 
gathering to try to stop that. You remember all of the baby boys being killed in Bethlehem. You know, Satan tried to stop it, tried to cut it short, but he didn't <laughs> succeed. And, and because God knew what he, he was doing, but he had told people already what he was doing. And at the end of the age, before Jesus returns, he is once again, he told the believers to pray for the peace of Jerusalem because he knew there would be this tremendous influx of demonic powers that would not want Jesus to come back on a physical, literal Mount of Olives in this city of Jerusalem. And Jesus himself said to the people of Jerusalem, he said, I will not return until you say, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai, until you say, blessed, welcome is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So, let you, yes, hallelujah. <laughs> Let's just proclaim together over Jerusalem. Jerusalem, we declare that you are a city who is going to welcome Jesus back to the earth. We declare, Jerusalem, that you are the throne of the Lord God Most High. We declare, Jerusalem, that you are the city of the great King. You are the city that will welcome him. You are the city that will usher in his return. And you are the city from which he will reign over the nations. Only when he reigns in you, O Jerusalem, will the nations finally know peace. Will they finally lay down the weapons of warfare? So you, O Jerusalem, who the whole world thinks of as the biggest problem and the center of all the, all the problems are actually the solution. You are the city who will welcome the Prince of Peace and provide for him a throne from which he will bring his peace to the nations. So we bless you, Jerusalem, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach. We bless you tonight, Jerusalem, with peace. We pray for your shalom. We pray for your peace. We stand with you. May the glory of the Lord that was read about tonight in Isaiah 62 shine upon you. And may the glory of the Lord rise greatly upon you, O Jerusalem. Become a mighty light to all the world. In the name of Jesus, amen. And one more word. One more word. Go ahead. One more, one word. more word. And then you'll go. <laughs> why, why Jerusalem? Oh, Lord. This is King David, Psalm 132. Oh, Lord, you have chosen Jerusalem as your home. This is my permanent home, where I shall live, you said, for I have always wanted it this way. I will make this city prosperous and satisfy her poor with food. I will clothe her priests with salvation, and her saints shall shout for joy. <laughs> Jerusalem! Let's sing about it. Come on now. Go for it.
Given the gift of interpretation, I understood every word in that song. It was amazing. If you just uh, if you just tuned in, we are in Jerusalem, Israel, and all of these people in here that are now waving to you, they love Jesus in this room tonight, and they're going to smile at you. Turn around and look at that big camera back there and smile whether you have teeth or not. Just smile at it. And just love on everybody that's viewing and watching and tuned in from around the world. Uh, standing in with us is Igor Nikitin from our Russian channel. We are in Jerusalem, and the Russians have come to Jerusalem. And here we are. You, uh, you were, uh, the other day on Behind the Scenes, Dad, you were talking about feeling like the, the old uh, prophet that welcomed Jesus, that got to see uh, tell that little story, Simeon. Again. Simeon. What what was what were you what yes, were you saying yes. about that? It was such a precious story. You can read it in Matthew. It's when they brought the baby Jesus to the temple to do for him after the ordinance of the law. There was an ancient elderly priest by the name of Simeon there, and an ancient lady, a widow of fourscore years. She had just lived in the temple, and both of them had been touched by the Holy Spirit and made to know wow. that before they died, they were going to get to see the Lord's Christ, the Lord's salvation. Hallelujah. And when they brought the baby Jesus in, the Holy Spirit brought Simeon hmm. from another whole part of the temple, and he ran and he met Mary and Joseph, and he picked up that infant child Jesus, eight days old mm. and he looked up to heaven and he said now Lord thy servant can depart in peace for mine eyes have seen your salvation mm. and little Anna came and she likewise and she was really the first evangelist wow. she ran out and began telling everybody <laughs> about the fact that the Messiah has been born and so there's the history of this city is just amazing. But you almost feel like being in this studio and getting to do your first <laughs> Praise the Lord program. You realize, Dad, that we are live. You know, this is as live as it gets. Uh, welcome to live TV, Israel. Uh, if, hmm. if we make a mistake or if somebody sings off key or if we <laughs> drop a microphone, it's live. It's going everywhere tonight. And uh, we are, we're just here to kind of love on everybody and share. But that's kind of... All, you know, you've been thinking about well, this for 38 years. I have, and that is a dream come true. And I wish I could tell you that the Lord had revealed to me that I would be here until the second <laughs> event of his coming to the city of Jerusalem. No, I think that's um, how Lindsay, right? Yeah. How, how yeah. Lindsay thinks he will be, and uh, <laughs> I, uh, I hope to be. Yeah. But either way, I'm in heaven, so you, you can't scare me with heaven. Yeah. So... Um, while you have been gone for a few days, Igor and I have kind of held down the fort and Rick Ridings, but you took off with our esteemed doctor friend, Dr. Gerges, that you will introduce in a moment. And you've been down in the city of Juba, Sudan, South Sudan. Yes. Please okay. tell us about that. Uh, around the world, the headlines, um, you know, some of the headlines, you know, <laughs> free at last. Uh, it is the first time that we know, Dad, where a Christian nation has been birthed from a Muslim nation. Mm. So we think mm. that this, I mean, we, you know, we've been asking around. We can't think of, a, of another example. Uh, welcome to East Africa, uh, sister. And <laughs> let me just tell you, we, we flew in to what is the acting capital 
of South Sudan, President Kiir was sworn in mm -hmm. as the president. And let me just tell you, it's pretty interesting to be able to be a part of the day one of an entire nation recognized by the United Nations. Now, you got to meet him, didn't you? Yes. We and were. is he not a believer? Well, Dad, the whole nation was built on biblical principles. It's kind of like America. Mm -hmm. When we were, when I was there, you know, I was standing uh, you know, there and everyone, you know, call, General Colin Powell, for example, mm -hmm. uh, responded to a question and he said, this kind of reminds me of our founding fathers. And, wow. you know, we've got, a, we've got an amazing report coming to you, uh, to TBN family, that is being put together. My son, Cody... Uh, and Jan Karnas, who's on camera here in the Jerusalem studio, uh, we sweat through our suits <laughs> in about, uh, I think they said it was 40 degrees. In America, that's like 100 and something. And about five and a half hour ceremony, you know, those ceremonies when you, when you birth a nation, you want to make a big deal about it. <laughs> yeah, right. and, and so here comes a parade after parade after parade. And then you realize President Bashir who is in the north, uh, walked to the ceremony that morning as president of Sudan. Halfway through... A Muslim. Yes. Halfway through, he became the president of northern Sudan, and President Kier became president of south Sudan. Wow. And we pray that that will start the ending of the violence that they have seen along Muslim and Christian basically living quarters there that the, that they estimate two and a half million people have been killed in that area. Oh, you know, we have been helping uh, Franklin Graham and yes. Samaritan's Purse for several years. Franklin has built a hospital and a clinic down there, and unfortunately, powers from somewhere, the north, uh, would, would literally bomb the, the hospital. hospital. Yeah. And, and Jan and I, we would raise money and send, and how we love Franklin Graham. And he we, was there. He was there, and we send our relief money through him. Why reinvent the wheel, you know? He, uh, Samaritan's Purse is the most oh. amazing organization, and, and in the report that I'll bring to you in a few days when we get it edited, uh, will be about uh, 20 minutes with, with Franklin Graham. Good. And an American delegation was there. I got to meet one of four, four-star generals, you know, <laughs> you've got a couple of outfits where you got a bunch of stars on your shoulders. They're not exactly real. They're, they're you know, they, they, it's the school of hard knocks. I'm in the Army of the Lord. Yes, you're, yes. The, you're a four-star general in the Army of the Lord. Yes, yes. I got to meet General Ham, and one of the things that was such a, an amazing thing there, and I got to greet uh, uh, the president Museveni and his wife Janet, who flew over and were there. From all of those in Uganda, God bless you. You're mm -hmm. watching tonight, and uh, Dr. Rafik Gar Rafik Gurgis, please come and uh, just stand right here next to uh, my father. And we got the chance to be there together right. in Juba. Uh, tell first of all to those watching by TBN that maybe don't see behind the scenes and aren't familiar. What is your part of the TBN family? Well, um, I am over the Healing Channel, which is the other, one of the many channels that TBN is uh, sponsoring to go around the world, but it's all in Arabic 24-7. It covers the Europe, it covers the Middle East, North Africa. It reaches to close to a potential 400 million viewers in wow. the Arab world. So it's really a privilege. And, you know, being here and... I'm really moved by the spirit. You know, um, Dr. Crouch and Matt, uh, peace treaties can let you exchange diplomatic relations. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus who will allow you to exchange love. Amen. And this is very significant. Being uh, born as an Egyptian, coming here, uh, being over an Arabic channel, Arabic speaking channel, knowing what it means, when he is lifted up, he will draw everybody Amen. to him. So this is so significant. And what's very significant when we were in South Sudan and seeing this, what I, what I call, this is a born again experience to that nation. Mm. All of the people who lived in that country for centuries were born 
to Sudan. Now they are born to their destiny. This is the same born again experience that we are Christians are experiencing. They are experiencing it on a like national level. But this was awesome to see what God is doing, to see the president of South Sudan coming up to the podium, talking to peoples around the world and telling them about God, about the blessing of God on yeah. that nation. Oh telling everybody, everybody who is watching, telling them, we will not forget our martyrs, but we are going to forgive our enemies because this is what God wants us to do. This is awesome. Tell, tell him to move to America and run for president. <laughs> Now, yeah. let me just paint you a picture, Dad. You weren't there. Let me give you a little verbal kind of, you know, picture of what happened. We flew in and to an airport that might see one plane every other day, <laughs> there was about 35 large 737s, you know, and, and heads of state, 11 heads of state had wow. flown in. The prime minister of this and that, you know, I mean, just 11 complete heads of state and the people of Sudan were dressed in their you know <laughs> tribal outfits and they had headdresses and they had their spears and their shields and they were <laughs> jumping and and by the way I don't know uh, one of the pictures I don't know if it, it got in but I was standing next to a general okay and literally dad some of the people in South Sudan are uh, are they close to seven and a half feet tall? Right, right. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. come on. It was ridiculous. It was like, let me stand where you are, Dr. Gerges, for one second. I took it, let me scoot over one second. I stood next to a general and took a picture, and it was like this. <laughs> he was this wow. tall, and he was looking down like this on me, yeah. and he was uh, a general in the, su the, in the, the south. Ma the Maasai tribe. It Mm -hmm. it, it is amazing, but everyone was rejoicing, jumping, praising God, carrying uh, crosses through the streets of, of Juba, mm -hmm. and everyone rejoiced at the birth of a new Christian nation. Now, what, what language are, is going to be the dominant language? Uh, it's, it's English. Everybody there it's speaks English. English or their tribal language. Uh, okay. Around one third of the population speak Arabic. Those who are educated in schools. And, well, uh, we need to get your uh, Arabic language programs. Absolutely. One thing that Dr. Gerges uh, didn't tell you, uh, we've been on the air with the Healing Channel and the Arabic Language Channel for several years now. Yeah, seven but, years. But uh, for, uh, I guess, over a year ago, uh, you know, the scripture says the old men will dream dreams. Mm -hmm. I had a very vivid dream that we now know that how many Muslims a day are converting to the Christian faith? I think three years back, the Al Jazeera, in one of its reports, uh, told the world, basically, there are about 16,000 Muslims who come daily. A day? Daily. A day. And this was a few years back. Hello. I think the Lord needs an amen or yeah. something on that. Especially here in Israel. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, what is happening is... I think the Lord was certainly in that dream, and I, I saw Dr. Gerges, and I said, now, these new converts, we must disciple them. Yeah. So we've got to start an Arabic language Bible school. Right. And tell us, you're doing it, aren't you? Yes, we are. We started, and we are continuing to do that, uh, to have an, a Bible school on air. Uh, when the Lord sent the disciples, he told them to go and preach the gospel, but he also told them to disciple them. And this is so much important, and much important in people who are coming from a background that they have grown up knowing that Jesus is just one of the prophets, and Jesus is not Lord. And there is a lot of things that can go wrong with them if they are not really rooted deeply into the word of the Lord. So we are doing that. We are moving forward with a lot of programs that we bringing the Bible live to them. Right. We are going to go over every part of the Bible, trying to tell them all about Jesus. I need to say hello also to those viewing in Nairobi, Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, hello, Leo Slingerland, who is uh, the head and partners with Trinity Broadcasting there. 
and sends out an amazing channel there in Nairobi. What we're going to do, Dad, and you had one thing that you wanted to read there. You got your finger on it there? But we, I wanted to paint one more little picture of a, of a satellite dish, a solar panel, a car battery, <laughs> a, trans, a little transceiver, a little, a little you know, catcher, and a TV monitor. And we can put, for about $600, we can put in the farthest reaches, does it matter if there's electricity? A whole kit. A whole new setup, which would be a channel there and would be able to receive TBN uh, right there from any of the satellites that they would really choose. They could pick and choose there. We've got several that reach that area of the world. And we are gonna start putting those in. We're gonna be working with Franklin Graham. Thank you, Franklin Graham, for everything you do through Samaritan's Purse. Yeah. And everyone in the world, we have a new Christian nation, and let's pray for it. It is called South Sudan and their Amen. President Keir. And you had one little quote you wanted to read out of the newspaper. President Keir, thank you. I wasn't sure how to pronounce his name. Well, he's, he's quite a guy. I love his big Texas cowboy hat yes, that he bet. wears. Oh, does he ride horses? I'll bet I he does. I sure does. Anyway, I was caught in this uh, national news newspaper the words to their new national anthem. Right. And I'll only read one little portion. It starts out with, Oh God. Come on now. We praise and glorify you. Wow. Hallelujah. For your grace on South Sudan, land of great abundance. Wow. Upon us united in peace and harmony. It goes on and swells to their new national anthem that they sing, but it was so interesting to me that the very first words of their song was in glorifying and recognizing God. That's awesome. Isn't oh. awesome? Oh, we, we need him in America. <laughs> we do. Okay, we, uh, we are going to just get some testimonies from some pastors. How about, how about one more song? Is that okay? Can we do one more song? You guys ready to go? The band's got to get in place. We've got a little family here. Do a proper introduction of kind of where we are again. Yeah, we are uh, in Igor. Jerusalem, and uh, this next song very important for us. We're going to sing about the peace, what Lord bringing to us, uh, that Lord is bringing the, uh, for all of us peace in heaven. Beautiful. And uh, we need that, uh, all of us, all our viewers who support in TBN, we need the love of God in our families. We need uh, peace in our families, and we're blessing you from Jerusalem yes. in the name of the Lord. We're blessing those who are sick today and we know as you're watching TBN the Spirit of the Lord coming from Jerusalem and bringing you peace, healing and love. And where is this broadcast going right now live? We are going from Shlom Sion Street, uh, Peace of Zion Street <laughs> in the downtown of Jerusalem the most important place so we want the peace to Jerusalem and from Jerusalem beautiful please
please and your families we're praying for your uh, blessings we're praying that the uh, people of uh, TBN will receive the greatest blessings in this year and we believe this is a very prophetic word when the uh, first time praise the Lord program started from here from Jerusalem from city of the Lord and we know that Lord is preparing the best for you uh, keep calling from all over the world we know that there is a thousands upon thousands of phone calls we're receiving right now thank you thank you for calling us we believe that Lord is touching your life right now I have a question to the uh, prophet patriarch uh, that was introduced my father Paul Crouch the very fact that we are you know here physically standing in this place and doing the program from here we're gonna get some testimonies from some of the pastors here in a few minutes is there a special thing about being here in Jerusalem is there something that 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 can you know add a dimension to what we're doing by emanating programming from here in Jerusalem yes okay. it's found in second Chronicles chapter 7 after Solomon got through dedicating the beautiful temple of God God appeared to him again by night and he said I have chosen this place to be my home forever my eyes and my ears will be opened wide awake in this house day and night there is something about that old western wall that's all that's left really of that awesome temple that was built by Solomon but I tell you every time I approach that old wall I can feel the radiation of the glory of God because his presence is still there in a unique way and so that's why we love to send our prayer requests and have Rick writings and the kids take them down to the Western Wall and pray for them and stuff some of them in the cracks. I, I don't know where those cracks keep opening up and there's always room for one more little prayer request. People love to stick their prayer requests in there. But I'm telling you, that is it. God said, my eyes and my ears will be opened perpetually in this place. Wow. That was a really good answer. Amen. I didn't even prepare that in advance. <laughs> okay, if you just tuned in, uh, Russ loved to get a big wide shot, and if the wide shot could just start kind of moving back, that would be nice. I want to I wanna just kind of show off uh, where we are. We are in Shalom, say it again. Sion. Sion. Street. Street. Uh, in and Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. We say it. Shalom Zion. Yeah. You yes. say it your way. What is it? Yeah, Shalom Sion. Street. No, that's it's Shalom Zion. Shalom uh, Zion. Yes. Correct, yeah. I learned that now. Stop with the Russian accent thing. Yeah, Enough of the that. Russian thing. <laughs> so let's just talk right now. Okay. Okay, so Shalom Zion Street. Yeah, Shalom Sion Street. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yes. And just if you, if you go out the door here of this studio and step into the street... You can see the Jaffa old Gate. Jaffa Gate. We yeah. are just uh, right across the street, really, from the Mamilla Hotel, the King David Hotel. The what is yeah. the? Yeah, this is the center of Jerusalem, and the, I mean, it's a most strategic place. Uh, first of all, from the top, from the roof, we can see uh, main synagogue here. We can see uh, court. Yeah, the uh, main what? Syna synagogue. Sy you said synagogue. Yes, it's because synagogue. it's in, in the Hebrew, in the Russian, synagogue. Okay, we're in English. We're okay. going to America now. Yes. Yeah, okay, but we're synagogue. going all over. We're going all over the world right yeah. now. You know. Yeah. So we. I'm talking to the Russian audience right yeah. now because Apparently. we are uh, right now showing this channel and live to uh, whole Israel first of all, and yeah. to the Russian people all over the world. More than 300 million Russian people living all over the world. So, so. if they're watching right now, what do you want to say to them in your Russian language? Give us a просто благословляем вас во имя Иисуса Христа. Отсюда из Иерусалима благословение Божье истекает ваш дом прямо сейчас. Просто примите это благословение во имя Иисуса Христа. 
Amin. Amin. Slavo Bogo. Slavo Bogo, Dr. Krauts. Okay, let me, let me, uh, let me do one. I'm going to do one impromptu thing, and then we want to get some pastors. Yes. Russ, um, go to the wide shot, and I'm going to go over to Jan Karnas. I'm going to ask him a quick question. So I'm just kind of preparing the, it, the, the control room, the camera operator right here. Oh. Um, and uh, we, I, I, want to, I want to have Jan comment because he was just, he was just, he, first of all, he's in Juba with me. And he was just as a young man called here to Jerusalem. It's just an interesting thing. I, I got to tell, he is the consummate director. Yes, I mean. He can't ever just be a guest or a host <laughs> of a program. He has to tell the cameraman and the director and everything. Yeah. And even now, this is a new one going, even yeah. talking to the yeah. cameraman. Like father, like son. Okay, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Obviously, uh, we're going to be on this camera, so somebody's going to shoot us uh, eventually. Jan, you, uh, you are here in Jerusalem, and you've been here how many years? I've been in uh, Jerusalem and in, and in Israel for 36 years. Okay, and you were telling me on board the airplane that there was, you just kind of packed up and you just kind of came here. How, how did that all happen? Well, uh, I, bl I became a believer in the God of Israel, and I uh, started reading the Bible, and God just said, go to Israel. I came over here. I was on a kibbutz for a few years. Uh, then about 30 years ago, I went to the Voice of Hope radio station in South Lebanon. I worked with George Otis for some years, and then with Middle East Television with uh, Pat Robertson. And for the last 20 years, I've been, uh, I have been—I have a company here, a video production company in Israel. And so tell me, you skipped over it quick. God said, just come here? I mean, as a young man, it was just go to Israel? Well, I'll tell you, in 1975, or uh, I read a book called The Late Great Planet Earth. Oh. And I said, I don't think we're going to make that it to 1977 be. before all these things happen. <laughs> and I just felt, I want to get over to Israel, the focus of attention. This is where God is working in the midst of the nations. Yeah. And so I came here, and now it's 36 years later. 36 years later. You're still here. All right. Hallelujah. So I'm sure there's going to be a similar kind of testimony with some of these pastors. Well, it, you know, what I want to know is... There's always a little key. What was the key that completed your faith? We used to call you, dear Messianic believers, completed Jews. Is that still a proper term, or do we not do that anymore? Uh, you are now Messianic yeah. believers, are yeah, you messianic not? Messianic believers, yes. Yeah. But the, what was the little key that caused you to accept Jesus My, as your Messiah? That's a good yeah. question. Really good question. Hallelujah. Pleasure to be here. You know, to be messianic, to follow the Messiah. We know the Old Testament very well. We meditate this. We're from a young age, some, some kids, and you say, Jeremiah, they speak. They speak I have Psalm 33. They, they speak. They know the word. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, to receive Yeshua, this is coming to be complete together. And we call ourselves the follower, anointed one. Yeshua. Mm -hmm. And the way how we pray a little bit different, the way how we're thinking is also different. Well, no, but I, we are I hear all that, but you know. How but, did you find him? How? Oh, 21 years ago. Tell me how. 21 years ago. I come from the Holocaust survivor family. My whole family died in Auschwitz. From my mother and father's side, all of them. And from the rabbi families. And I have the very painful stories. My grandma shared this. Very painful stories. What they was in Auschwitz and her sister and Holy and I grow up with this. And I have thousands of Jewish in Israel and around the world growing with these painful stories. And one day, one day, the Lord sent one Dutch man from Holland. He was working with me in the hospital. And he said to me, Come to the congregation. I said, What a congregation, you know? It's taken me one year to decide to come to this congregation. And I remember this small congregation, only 30 people in the Bethlehem Road in Jerusalem. They call it the Covenant of Jerusalem congregation. Mm -hmm. And I was so welcome there. There's like 30 people. They're full of love. Mm -hmm. And this Moroccan Jew, Tunisian Jew, Polish Jew, Russian Jew, and all we are 30 of us, so multicultural. The worships touch me. I start to continue come. More for one and a half year. One and a half year. I receive everything with love. 
but to Jesus is my son of God. It's very hard. Yeah. And take me one and a half year to think, to search in the word of God. When did to, it actually and happen? And one day, <laughs> I traveling from Tel Aviv to, to Jerusalem. And, and I was in that time still fashion model. And I represented Dolce Gabbana company. And not walk freely in the street of Jerusalem because of the holders. Uh, boards and, and of my pictures there, you know, and as, and uh, I traveling with first bus 6:30 in the morning after the hard work in studio for shooting. Sometimes I, you know, eight hours for one picture to take, oh my. and I take bus and I see the hand, and you come to the to the Jerusalem hills, you know, the Judean hills. It's a beautiful mountain. Very early in the morning, it's a precious, and I sitting in the front. See it, and I see the hand, Who's and I hear the voice, and I was scared. I look around, no one around me. And I was, what's going with me, Daniel? And I hear the voice, everything what I create by sand, sand and water, life or dead. And I see the hand. I was so afraid. Very early in the morning, I go to the same congregation in Jerusalem, and I wait in the time this pastor is come, pastor coming. And it was like 7.30 in the morning, still waiting and thinking, in a full of fear. And I understand, the fear of God come upon me. Mm. And he said to me, Daniel, this pastor said to me, Daniel, the Lord is calling you. Wow. Uh -oh. After a short while, I decide to baptize, but not in, in you know, Jordan River where I now do most of the baptism, sometimes three, four hours standing to receive people to baptize because so many people come from around the world to baptize in Jordan River. But the Lord said to me, I need to baptize in the place of John Baptist okay. and encourage him. And it's my life and never be the same. Now, you, you've got to explain this hand. Was that a vision? Was that That's like the vision? The hand of the God? The hand of God is vision. And... and there was no body, but no, just the hand. No, the only hand. The huge hand. Wow. Yeah. Well, that would get your attention. And the Lord <laughs> is start to heal me. For one moment in the other congregation where we're starting with other brother, one man ran to the front, and he bowed down and embraced my legs and cried. And, you know, so many people come to Jerusalem. We call it Jerusalem Syndrome. Funny people, you know, we're living a different from over, you know. They have, you, you know, you live in Jerusalem. Many kind of multicultural coming here and different visions. Yes. This person was speak German. He from the city of Graz, from Austria. He's from from Nazi family, from Hebel's family, from SS. Oh boy. He was two years before he came to Jerusalem. He came to the Lord. And all the two years, the Lord said to him, go to Jerusalem and repent. Go to Jer And he entered to by mistake in our congregation. Yeah. And he asking people, you know. they have somebody who Holocaust survivor. And he said, Daniel Rosen, the whole his family died in Auschwitz, in Holocaust. He was without double thing, run to the front, embrace my legs, and start to cry. The lady translate, and I bowed down. And I embrace him. And from this moment, my life is transformed. Oh. The heavy stone has stuck out the stone of unforgiveness. You know, I'm, I'm hearing this same miracle from the Arabs and now even from the Jews. God is simply appearing to you. Yeah. He's yeah. giving you signs and wonders and miracles. Amen. He is jealous for his ancient Hallelujah. people, and he wants you back, Amen. Amen. and he's getting you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And you know, he's uh, now uh, overseeing many churches here in, here in uh, Israel. From all over the Israel, he's a president of uh, association of the churches. So this is a very exciting event for us. Next here. pastor. And we have the uh, pastor, uh, Oleg Hazin, with his uh, wife. He's a uh, pastor from Ashdod, uh, city of Ashdod. And uh, a great blessing. He is taking place in, uh, in many our uh, programmings. And um, a lot of people. Oleg Hazin. 
Очень хорошо будет здесь сегодня замечательный день, и мы на правильном месте. И не верится вообще, что сейчас мы транслируемся на самом деле на кабельном телевидении. Абсолютно, я буду транслировать, доктор Крайс, в частности для вас. Он говорит, что это очень важно для нас быть здесь, в этом месте. Мы не можем верить, потому что это реально реально весь мир. Невозможно было мечтать вообще 20 лет назад даже и думать невозможно было, что придет такой день. 20 Доктор Крауч, это историческое событие, вы здесь. Тебе на Израиль открыт, и все народы сейчас видят нас, и мы вещаем с Иерусалима на весь мир. Это благословение. Вы здесь, и ТБН coming upon Israel. Okay. Now, as a, a Russian Jew, uh, were you into the Judaistic faith? And if so, how did you become a completed or a Messianic Jew? Oh, да, это интересная история. Я уверовал еще в бывшем Советском Союзе, когда я был ребенком практически 18 лет. So I received Jesus when I was a child, almost in, uh, in Russia. Because many of the Russian that have immigrated here, they, they sort of grew up in the Russian Orthodox Church, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, uh, many, many Russians who came here, they, first of all, they came without <coughs> preoccupied ideas, and some of them grew up in the Russian Orthodox uh, Church. So this is such a blessing that uh, even the communism helped us, you know, here, mm -hmm, to, mm -hmm. because we came here with understanding of uh, Lord Jesus. How many, how many members in his church overnight? <laughs> Может быть, 100 человек. Around 100 people. 100 people. Yes. And, okay, what did he preach to his people last Sunday? Что ты проповедовал? Что весь Израиль будет спасен. Jesus. That Israel gonna be, will be saved. Whole Israel will be saved. Roman 11, 25 and 26. Dr. Crouch, and we, we have thank you. amazing pastor here from... Uh, Uh, actually, he came here from Congo. Uh, he, it's a pastor, Tosh, uh, from a congregation, come and see, you know, because a lot of people need to come and see uh, truth and the reality of what the Lord is preparing for us. Now, I know Pastor Tosh speaks English. Yes, I do. Okay. So, <laughs> tell me how a... Uh, now, you were originally from... Uh, from the DRC, Democratic Republic of Congo. Okay, so tell me how a good man from Congo ends up in Jerusalem pastoring a congregation in Jerusalem. This has got to be a good story. It's so awesome that uh, I found myself in Israel for the past uh, 14 years. So he, the story started that uh, I was in a land called Nairobi in Kenya, where they speak Swahili. I was there ministering there as an evangelist. So while we are praying and I was preparing my journey to go to America. And the Lord appeared after three days uh, of fasting and prayer. Okay, now you skipped over that pretty quickly. He, he appeared to you personally? In a dream. In a dream. And then the Lord said that I will let you, I will bring you to a land that you never uh, thought in your mind. In that land, it might be very hard, but wait for a little bit. I have a plan for you. Now, let, let me ask you this. Did, Do any of your ethnic roots go back into Judaism? Yeah, normally from my tribe, uh, as uh, in Congo, I'm from the province, uh, the region that's uh, where there is a lot of diamond. You know, my country is the uh, first country, number one in uh, industrial diamond. Right. So into the province where I came, and then they always call us the, the Jew, uh, the Jewish from uh, Baluba. <laughs> So which means because we knew a uh, circumcision. The you know, Jew from Jaluba. From Baluba. Baluba, the yeah. Jew from Baluba. So the culture, the tradition, when we compare to the Jew of Israel, it's almost the same, starting by the uh, circumcision. Interesting. Interesting. Before the Belgian come for the colonization. Does, does the Israeli government then recognize you as a, a Jewish immigrant? Uh, I have no proof of that, and uh, they have not even recognized apart from the, the Ethiopian uh, Jewish. Uh, but my wife, uh, Ofli, she's a uh, Jewish, oh. so I get connected to her. When we got married, Ofli, I have to benefit of the citizenship. But uh, 
I'm still Christian as a pastor. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so we went through a lot, but. Uh, okay, now you skipped over. The Lord appeared to you in a dream and sent you here. Sent me here. I, when I came here, you know, we just they don't grant a visa here to stay for establishment. The first thing I did is to just to go to Bible college. So I had the theology in Jerusalem, Bible Institute of Jerusalem, for the past five years. So I had a master's degree in uh, theology. And from that, I met my wife in Nazareth. Nazareth. So she is a Jewish background from a Russian Jew. And the father was from Congo. And the mother from here, Russian Jew. So, 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 and to the other side, my wife, she was praying. I need a pastor who can speak French and English, and he is a man of God. And I was speaking both languages, English and French. And when I appeared, and this, that was the start of everything. Wow. <laughs> There's no way in the world you could doubt you were supposed to be here. What did you preach to your congregation this, this last week? First of all, this last week we pray for the return of Christ. And because we have a mixture church, you know, we are combined. We have a lot of people coming from different backgrounds. We have Israelis, Israelis. we have Russia, uh, Russians, we have some uh, Philippines and uh, Nepalese, uh, Indians. People come from different backgrounds from all over the Africa. What did you preach this Sunday? Uh, last time I preached the six clothes of uh, uh, Joseph. Pastor Jeremiah was there. Because Joseph was being, the father gave him, first of all, a cloth of many colors. But after that, the brothers, they sold him, they gave him another cloth of a slave. And those people came and they bought him, they go and sold him again to Potiphar with another cloth. For him, he changed his cloth into a cloth of a domestic or household. And afterward, they accused him for committed, uh, committing a sexual assault. So he was transferred to the prison, and that garment was transferred to the garment of a prison. So he became a prisoner. From there, so he was doing well, and then a news came from the, the kingship. Pharaoh could not sleep because of that. They had to bring him in the front of Pharaoh. So they cloth him a cloth of presentation. So he was honored. And from there, everything that had been stinking in his body was supposed to be washed out. And afterward, he was being crowned with a garment of glory as a number two. Wow. <laughs> awesome. And, uh, and uh, your church is where? It's in downtown Tel Aviv. Where especially in the, in, the, in the center of Tel Aviv, where everybody can get the bus to go all over the Israel. And you, preach in, and you preach in French? I do preach in English and then they translate in French. Do you speak fluent French? That is uh, the first language. Your first language. Tell those watching in France that Jesus loves them. Et j'aimerais dire à tous ceux qui nous écoutent et que nous vous qui nous écoutez en français, j'aimerais dire que Jésus Christ vous aime. Nous sommes juste, euh, disons, dans la en pleine ville de Jérusalem avec le, la chaîne TBN. Et ma Amen. prière qui est aussi levée de mon cœur est que Dieu vous bénisse grandement et que la bénédiction d'Abraham, d'Isaac et de Jacob vous soit pour partage Amen. dans le nom de Yeshua Amasi. Amen. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, brother. God bless you. I feel like we are here cloth of many colors. Yes. Obviously, which is awesome. given to uh, by the Lord to us. Here is uh, the pastor who came here uh, from uh, Cyprus. Okay. for our program. Uh, his name is Alexander Ivanov. Uh, and that we're, sounds a, li- a little bit Russian. It's uh, oh, totally yeah. Jewish. A li- uh, little bit, yeah. Uh, little Alexander bit Ivanov. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Alexander. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, <clears throat> да, спасибо за такую честь uh, действительно быть we're so thankful to the Lord that we're here in Jerusalem. Uh, so the Russians are spread all over the world. Cyprus, uh, one of the countries, but here in Jerusalem, uh, so many Russians are meeting everywhere. И знаете, вот ТБН это то, что объединяет. То, когда ты оторван от корней, от своей страны. So TBN is what united the people from all over the world when you are uh, kind of uh, break out from your own nation. And now uh, TBN is taking you to uh, TBN's love 
Lord's love. И это действительно каждый там чувствовал, когда вот особенно не было церкви русскоязычной на Кипре, и многие смотрели ТБН, и сейчас продолжают смотреть еще больше. Ты еврей тоже по этнической группе? No, I'm Russian. I'm purely Russian. Yeah, I'm Ruski. Yeah, Ruski, da. Okay. Ruski. And you have a Ruski. congregation in Cyprus. Yes. A quick little geographical. Uh, Cyprus is an island. How far off of the uh, coast of? Thirty-minute flight by air. Just did it. Thirty-minute flight, and it is. Uh, their language is is kind of Greek. They're on the island of uh, Cyprus. There. It's so. Greek. Yeah, yeah, it's a Greek it's island. Greek to me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you, Pastor. Thank you for being here. And uh, introduce our next pastor. Well, uh, Pastor Jeremiah, uh, you taught me this. Jeremiah. Uh, from yeah. Tel Aviv, uh, yes. where he has a great congregation. Lift up your head. Yeah, it's, and it's the name pastor of the Jeremiah, congregation. Pastor Jeremiah, where are you from originally? I'm originally from Nigeria. Nigeria. How did a Nigerian pastor come to be... Uh, a congregation here in Jerusalem. God is a God of miracle. Yes. Mm. And in every situation, he proved that he's God. Yeah. When I was about 17 years, I had a dream that I would be one day in Israel. Mm. My parents are uh, pastor. My grandfather was a pastor. My father is still a pastor. And today, I'm a pastor in Israel. Okay, sometimes dreams are the result of something you ate, like bad, bad food or bad chicken or bad pizza. So how did you distinguish the difference that God came to you in a dream or you were just having a dream that was uh, not going to be real? Because when he speaks, he brings it to pass. And today, my parents and everybody have know that God has spoken and he has brought it to pass. Because we're standing in Jerusalem right now. We are standing in Jerusalem and by his grace today, we have the largest African congregation in Tel Aviv today. Where is it exactly? In number 32, Lavender Street How many, in Tel Aviv. How many people? More than three to 400 people. Every Saturday we meet there. And what language? We speak in English and we translate in Arabic, because we have a lot of Sudanese oh. and Eritrean and people from South Africa. Beautiful. Amen. Wow. God bless you, brother. Wow. Thank you, brother. And I would love to, I would love to thank doctor. And every time I watch you people and everybody watch you, it's a blessing to everybody. Thank Most you. of my congregation and everybody, most especially the African congregation, are always blessed through TBN. Oh, wow. May God bless TBN. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Thank Matthew, you and this is a very special pastor f here from Jerusalem, yeah. uh, Oren Levery, and he is uh, really responsible for this uh, studio to get going every month. So he put his faith into TBN because he know the TBN is reaching the world. Where's his church? His church is located in Jerusalem. It's called King of Kings. King of Glory, Jerusalem. King, King of Glory, Jerusalem. Amen. Yeah, tell us about it. Y yes, our, our church uh, located here. And we pray every day for TBN because we have, you know, uh, years ago God spoke to us about television. And we starting pray for this. And uh, one day, God spoke to me, one channel from Russia coming to you. And I meet our brother, Igor Nikitin, you know, and he asked me, you have programs? I said, yes, I wait you because God spoke to me, you know, <laughs> and uh, it is blessing for us. We, I know God spoke to us about this day okay. and we're very happy. Hallelujah. One more question, and yes. I always search for this key. Now, did you grow up in the Jewish faith? Yes, absolutely, in synagogue. In synagogue. So I and my <laughs> wife, yeah, absolutely. Tell me the key. What was the key? It is 
Isaiah chapter 53. Ah. It is key for Jewish people, you know, because we, uh, we not speak about this in synagogue, you know, uh, the rabbis, mm. the rabbis close this thing, close this uh, chapter, you know, I but know. Uh, in the time, if you're Jewish, in the time you see this chapter, the Holy Spirit comes and starting to speak, you know, and, and in the time I receive Jesus, I see him, you know, like Pastor Daniel. I see him and, and something happening with me, you know. Mm. My mother, she received first and she starting to pray for me. Yeah, you know? yeah. Now, Isaiah 53. Yes. I can't see how anybody could read that chapter with an open heart and not know that it's talking about our precious Lord Jesus. Yes, absolutely. But how... how how do the rabbis explain that chapter? Rabbi says, uh, uh, it is, uh, God is, one day God is uh, open us this script, uh, oh. will reveal this scripture. And now it is you know, closed, you know. You know what? Yes. That's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> it is prophetic word. Yeah, right. Amen. And, uh, the, and when he comes and the scales fall Amen. and they look upon whom they pierced. Amen. Oh boy. Uh, uh, Dr. Krausch, we want to thank you and I, I and I, my family and our church. And we very love you and we thank you so oh, much. Bless you. Hallelujah. God thank bless. you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Yes. And uh, we have the pastor from Beersheba here, uh, Pastor Dmitri. And uh, he's uh, from Grace House because he ha he definitely he need Grace himself Where's and Beersheba? Beersheba. It's on the very top of uh, uh, from Dan to Beersheba. That's yes. the so uh, from Beersheba. so it's up on the uh, border of uh, Lebanon. On the south, on the south of Israel. That's what I thought. I thought Beersheba was way south. Yes. Yeah. You keep yeah. telling me it's way north. No, it's down Sorry. in the desert. It's down in the south. Yeah, south. The desert. I don't know where the south or north is. Dan starts. is north. Okay. From Dan yeah, to Beersheba. Okay. Re remember, we're live, guys. We uh, yeah. Airtime's kind of expensive. Let's go on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Dmitri, he is running the church what uh, consists from the those who are been on drugs, you know, oh. and the Lord is preaching to, uh, he's preaching to them and changing their lives. Uh, мы начали свою церковь uh, с реабилитационного центра, и мы просто действительно благодарим Господа, что so we started the church from rehab centers, and we're so thankful to the Lord uh, что есть канал TBN, что, that uh, we have the TBN channel there. Потому что наши студенты, мы их так называем, они больше не наркоманы. Because our students uh, uh, coming out of the drugs and what they learn in everything from TBN channel. Они смотрят постоянно канал TBN и. They're always watching TBN channel. И имеют огромное благословение, они учатся оттуда. And that's how they learn to live in the grace of God. Now is he also just an immigrant from Russia? Ты тоже из России. Да. Я родился в Омске, а эмигрировал с Саратова. Uh, so I was born in uh, Siberia, I lived in Siberia, and uh, uh, I immigrated here in Israel. Does he have any Jewish roots? Uh, all my roots, only Jewish. <laughs> Understood. Uh, that's very precious. How large is his church? Uh, around 70 people who wow. born again. Praise the Lord. Beautiful. And what did you preach last Sunday? последнее время мы проповедовали о любви. Most important thing we preached about the love of God, of course. That's what our people needs. Потому что только Божья любовь может поменять сердце человека. Only Lord's love can change the hearts of the people. Beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you just tuned in, we are in the brand new studio in Shalom Zion Street. Zion Street. Yeah, Shalom, Shalom Zion Street. Yeah, Shalom Zion Street. Yeah, and uh, we could walk out the door here and look and see the Jaffa which gate? Jaffa Gate. Jaffa Gate. Uh, it's just down the road. Yes. And uh, did you ever think from the days of 
your first dreams and visions of Israel, that we'd be standing here tonight, and uh, you didn't know that you were going to have to sit through the entire Praise the Lord program, but at least you're here, right? Yes. Well, don't ever fall down and break four ribs all at once. You know what? Normally, I would start a program with one of these great psalms. I, I love the psalms. Oh, when I get to heaven, I want to meet David. I want to spend a thousand years with him, just talking to him. And get ready, uh, musicians, to take us out in music here. But normally, uh, I would open. But tonight, I'm going to end with Psalm 150 from the Living Bible. Hallelujah. Yes, praise the Lord. Praise him in his temple and in the heavens he made with mighty power. Praise him for his mighty works. Praise his unequal greatness. Praise him with the trumpet and with the lute and harp. Praise him with the tambourines and processionals. Praise him with stringed instruments and horns. Praise him with the cymbals. Yes, loud clanging cymbals. Let everything that hath breath Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Say it with me. From Jerusalem, Israel. Can you believe it? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> the Praise the Lord program this is from Jerusalem, Israel. <laughs> Praise the Lord program. Hallelujah. And off with music. Shalom. <laughs> Yes, shalom aleinu Ve al kol am Yisrael Ve imru, imru amen Yes, shalom, yes, shalom Shalom aleinu ve al kol Yisrael Yes, shalom, yes, shalom Shalom Aleinu ve al kol Yisrael Ose Shalom im Roma Hu yase Shalom Aleinu ve al kol am Yisrael Ve imru, imru amen Yase Shalom, yase Shalom Shalom, yes, shalom, 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 Hallelujah. Давайте поблагодарим Господа и прославим Его. Аллилуйя.